There's even some sort of seminary for the religion now called the Anti-Racist Research and Policy Center in American University. Isn't that a Catholic university in Washington, D.C.? The founding director of the center is Ibram X. Kendi. He is the author of another source of scripture for the movement, a book called How to Be an Anti-Racist. McWhorter says that, like some religions, there are certain questions you're not supposed to ask. For example, why are black people so upset about one white cop killing a black man when black men are much more in much more danger of being killed by one another? He says that if you press the issue, you just don't get it. And you're probably a racist just for asking that question in the first place. Finally, he says, quote, anti-racism parallels religion also in the uh, proselytizing impulse. Uh, key to being an anti-racist is a sense that there's always a flock of unconverted heathen out there, end quote. And there have been lots of conversions lately. Last week, white female celebrities with large Instagram followings gave up control of their Instagram accounts to black women for the day to magnify their voices. The campaign is called hashtag share the mic now. Then there was this awkward confessional video by some of Hollywood's devout followers of this new religion. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for every unchecked moment, for every time it was easier to ignore than to call it out for what it was. Every not so funny joke. Every unfair stereotype. Just like John McWhorter describes, the racist guilt of white people is just assumed, and the religion requires that they perform a ritual of repentance. That PSA was made in partnership with the NAACP, and the video points viewers to the website itakeresponsibility.org, where you're given a menu of sins to confess to, and then the chance to show how sorry you are by pledging money to several organizations, including Black Lives Matter. This religion also imposes other rituals that must be performed to avoid being suspected of racism. Like the recent social media blackout day where users posted a plain black square to show support for Black Lives Matter. Of course, there's an irony of not saying anything on social media by totally saying something on social media. You get it? But again, that's probably just one of those things that you just don't bring up. And then there's the corporate ritual of proving your company is faithful to the religion. How many emails have you received lately from every country, uh, every company that you've ever bought anything from in the last year? Emails saying such and such company is against racism. As if this is a new development? Hasn't that been by and large the default position for most of America for decades now? No one disagrees that George Floyd's death uh, is appalling. We all agree it was bad. So why are companies tripping over themselves to let you know how not racist they are? Here's the reason they're terrified of this cult, the cult of anti-racism, made up of both white progressives and radical BLM followers. The cult of anti-racism is in the middle of a new inquisition where the guilt is already assumed because you were born with it. Now it's just a matter of you getting caught and punished. The original inquisition happened in Europe in the 12th century, and it lasted several hundred years. Inquisitors from the Catholic Church would arrive in your town, announce their presence, and then give people a chance to admit to any heresy. If you confessed, you might receive a lighter punishment, like a mere whipping or being sent on a pilgrimage. But if someone else accused you of heresy, well, you'd be forced to testify. And actually, it was... Only an opportunity to confess. And if you didn't confess, you were tortured and executed, which sometimes meant being burned at the stake. Heretics were not allowed to face their accusers. Of course. So you were accused of heresy. Well, you were just guilty. Does any of this sound familiar? 
An article in The New Yorker last year featured the nation's most prominent workplace diversity trainer, a white woman named Robin D'Angelo. The article describes her as, quote, endlessly deferential for her. Racism is basically whatever any person of color thinks it is. In the story, she tells about the world she and her fellow white people have all the power and therefore all the responsibility to do the grueling but transformative spiritual work for what she calls for. She seems to be right under this new religion, and in the current environment, virtually anything can be deemed racist. Just ask the executive editor of the Los Angeles Times. One of the active debates we had over the past week was about the use of the word looting to describe the destruction of property uh, and the very much the feeling among the uh, black journalists at the Los Angeles Times who frankly educated the rest of us to the fact that uh, looting had a pejorative racist connotation and that uh, comparing it to the kind of behavior of the police and uh, the kind of behavior that we witnessed uh, really was a false equivalency, and yet it was one that we were making as journalists. The world has gone mad. Who stands a chance with this kind of inquisition? During China's Cultural Revolution in the 1960s, Mao and his Red Guards killed at least 1.5 million Chinese citizens and imprisoned or tortured as many as 20 million more. This American cultural revolution isn't rounding up and killing people yet. God forbid it ever comes to that. But fueled by the intense religion of anti-racism, this movement is taking people out in a different way. First, it's cancellation. In the past two weeks, we've already seen several high-profile resignation for various anti-racism sins. The editor of the Philadelphia Inquirer, the editor-in-chief of Bon Appetit, the CEO of CrossFit. They're trying to cancel Candace Owens and Tucker Carlson for daring to ask some of those forbidden questions about the BLM organization. Keep going, Tucker and Candace. The president and and board chairman of the Poetry Foundation also forced to resign. The Poetry Foundation. They both happen to be old white guys. And you might think, well, who cares? It's the Poetry Foundation. But this is the textbook example of how the cult of anti-racism operates. The Poetry Foundation is one of the wealthiest literary organizations in the world, uh, at least in the U.S., with an endowment of $250 million. After George Floyd's death, the foundation released a short statement expressing solidarity with the black community and declaring its faith in the strength and power of poetry to uplift in times of despair. Well... I think you see the problem there. They didn't go far enough for the cultural Marxists in the room. A group of black poets wrote an open letter denouncing the foundation's short statement. They wrote, and I quote, given the stakes, which equate to no less than genocide against black people, the watery vagaries of this statement are ultimately a violence. You see what they did there? They took a statement of support and interpreted it as violence. But wait, there's more. Ultimately, we dream of a world in which the massive wealth hoarding that underlies the foundation's work would be replaced by the redistribution of every cent to those labor amassed, those who labored amassed those funds. Uh, so wait a minute, it is literally Marxism there, right? It's not about racism at all. It's about good old communism. Make sure you give the money to the workers. Okay. So why is this religion of anti-racism the most dangerous cult in America right now? Well, because it's all-encompassing and inescapable, and it's changing the foundation of our country almost overnight. The Inquisitors are out to force you to to catch you in any kind of heresy. And when they do, you don't have the right to face your accusers. You don't have a right to try to defend yourself. If you do try, well, that just simply proves you are racist. It is dangerous because you're guilty until proven really super sorry. And even if you repent, you probably still 
are going to get canceled at best.